Hello everybody and welcome back to another SFML tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to make our player move and have animations with it. So the first thing that we're going to need to know is which animations are we going to need? Well, it's actually pretty simple. The first animation that we need is the idle animation. And the next animation that we need is a walking animation. But why do we only need two animations even though we're going to have to walk left and right since the animation that we currently have only faces right? Well, this actually doesn't matter. What we can do is we can rotate the sprite so we can make it so our right facing tux faces the left. That's the first thing that we're going to need to do. So if we go back to our animation class, we're going to need to add one thing to our update function. It's going to be a boolean called face right. So if it faces the right direction. And then the only thing that we're going to need to change is down here. Since currently we're simply setting the left and the top, but it's always going to be right since that's the direction of our animation. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to move the dot left function. We're going to need to move it into an if statement that says if face right. And then we're going to have to put that in there. The next thing that we're going to need to do is an else statement. And in here we're going to have to set the uv rect dot left to current image dot x between records plus one multiplied by uv rect dot width. But hold on a second, how is this gonna solve stuff? The only thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna move one image to the right. Well, this is actually a really important step since what we're gonna do is we're gonna change the width of the image to the negative version of it. So basically, if we go back to our tuxes, normally go, we go from this point to that point. But what we want is the other way around. So what we need to do is we need to take that point as a start point and then have a negative value to the left. So we basically need to change our width to the negative version of the width. In order to do that, we have to set the width to the negative version. So we have to type in UV rect that width is equal to the negative absolute value of UV rect that width. And the reason that we're doing the absolute negative value is because otherwise we're constantly going to like invert it so we're constantly gonna make it negative so it's gonna switch between positive negative positive negative every frame and we don't want that and then we also have to add an absolute value here since we're using the actual width so if this is the second frame that we're calling this function then the width is gonna be the negative value so it's gonna multiply current image at x plus one with the negative value so it's gonna be a negative thing and we don't want that that's not possible the next thing that we're going to need is we're also going to need to set the width every time the face right is called. So if this if statement is true, but then we simply need to set it to, to the absolute value. This is really important because otherwise the width is always going to be negative and we don't want that. So if we go back to main.cpp, uh, we need to add something here. So let's actually do face right is equal to false for now. And let's see what it looks like. As you see, our tux is now facing left and the animation is still playing fine. So it's now time to actually create a player class. So let's add a new class, a C++ class, and it's called player. So now that we have a player class, we're gonna have to add a few variables. They all need to be private. The first thing that we're gonna need is an SF rectangle shape called body. As you might remember, in main.cpp, we have a rectangle shape called player. Well, since we now have a class for it, we don't need it in here anymore. So we're going to make a private variable called body, since it's going to be the body of our player. It doesn't have to be called player anymore because the class is already called player. And then we're also going to need an animation called animation, since you want to be able to animate the body. So we need to include animation. The next thing that we're going to need is an unsigned integer called row. It doesn't have to be an unset integer, but I like it when it's an unset integer because it's never going to be less than zero. So this way, other people that also look at your code will know that it's not going to be less than zero ever. The next thing that we're going to need is a float called speed. And then the last thing that we're going to need is a Boolean called right or face right. So this is basically whether we're facing right or not. And then we're also going to need two other functions. The first function that we're going to need is a void called update. As you might remember, we need to be able to update the animation and the, the movement. So we'll need this update function for that. And this function will need a float called delta time. The reason that we do not need a row in here, even though we do need it for animation, is because we have specified a row right here. We're going to use the row that our class wants to use, since we want to be able to modify which animation we're doing based on the movement that we're doing. 
and the next function that we're going to need is a void called draw. Uh, and this draw function is going to need an SF render window called window. The reason that I'm uh, having a separate draw function is so we can have body as a private variable. Because if you remember in main.cpp, down here we call window.draw with a player. And I don't like it if we have to call a getter on the player in order to get the body or if we have body as a public variable. So I most of the times make a draw function, but you don't have to do that. So let's create these functions. And let's also modify the constructor since the constructor is going to need all the variables that we're going to need for the animation. So it's going to need a texture, image count, and a switch time. So let's put them in there. And then we also need to add a float called speed. So now we just need to copy this and add it into the constructor here. And then it will complain. It will give us an error, but the error is no default constructor exists for class animation. How do we fix this? Well, it turns out that you can actually call constructors from member variables, even if they're not pointers. So even without the new keyword, the way that you do that is with a semicolon. So this is an initializer list. What we can do here is call constructors of member variables. So if you type in animation with a lower capital A, because it's the member variable, not the class itself, we can actually call a constructor here. So we're going to need to pass in the texture the image count and the switch time and that's it then it's really important that you do not put a semicolon at the end the next thing that we're going to need to do is initialize the private variables and set the body to the values that we had in our main.cpp file so the first thing that we're going to need to do is set the speed of this so this speed is equal to speed then we're going to need to set the row since we want to start at row zero and then we're going to have to whether we're facing right or not. So let's start with facing out right. So face, so face right is equal to true. And now we're going to have to initialize our body. So I'm going to cheat a little bit and just copy the variables from uh, main.cpp. So yeah, let's just copy this and then remove what we don't need anymore. So we're not going to need these two and we're going to change this to just texture. And then this is going to be body.set size. And then player has to be replaced with body everywhere. And that's it. Now what we need to do is uh, write the update and draw function. I'm first going to type the draw function because it's the easiest one. Which is window.draw with body. And the update function is going to be a little bit more difficult. We're first going to need some sort of movement variable. The reason that we're going to need a variable and not just move it whenever we press a button is because we want to have animation based on what direction we're moving it. So the way that I do that is I have an SF vector to F float called movement and uh, I initialize it to 0 to 0 F and 0 to 0 F. And then I have simply two if statements to check if uh, one key is pressed or the other key is pressed. So if SF keyboard is key pressed, SF keyboard a then movement.x minus equals since a is facing left speed multiplied by delta time it's important that we use delta time here because otherwise we're not gonna be able to move according to time so it will run different on different machines so then we can copy this uh, put it under there and change this to d and change this to plus equals the reason that I'm not using brackets here is because it's not always necessary. Uh, if you just have one line of code, then you don't need the brackets. So this is exactly the same as this. But as soon as we add a second line, so let's say we also have this here, then what you will see is it's no longer in the scope. This line, movement.x minus equals speed, is in a different scope than movement.x plus equals speed. So it only works if you have one line of code. There are hacky ways around it, but you should only use it if you have one line of code. So the next thing that we're gonna need is an if statement that checks if the movement that x is equal to zero. Because if the movement at x is equal to zero, then our row has to be zero. Because then we're doing our idle animation. The next thing that we're gonna need is an else statement. And this else statement is gonna set the row to one because that's our movement animation. And then we're gonna have another if statement in here uh, that checks whether the movement 
that x is bigger than zero. Since if it's bigger than zero, then face right is gonna be true. And then we're also gonna need an else, and this else is basically gonna say we're not facing right. So face right has to be false. And after that, we simply have to update the animation, set the UV rect again, and do the movement. So animation.update with row delta time and face right. Then we'll have to call body dot set texture rect with animation dot uv rect and we'll also have to do body dot move with movement and that's it that's everything that we have to do in the class so let's now actually use it in main cpp animation include to player include and let's change this animation when we use it to player player since we almost need the same variables, but the only thing that we're gonna add is a speed. So let's put it at 100 at OF. Since our player has a width of 100, uh, it's also handy to have a speed of 100, since we know that's only gonna move the size of one tux per second. And that's an okay speed for now. So let's now remove uh, the rectangle shape. Oh. Player that's a position, and player that's a texture. And that's basically it. The next thing that we're gonna need to do is call player.update with delta time and we're gonna have to call player.draw with window and now if you run a program you will see that I did something wrong uh, in the draw function I forgot to add the end it needs an end so player.draw needs to have an end between the render window and the window. Since we want to use the same window that we have in main.cpp, we don't want to copy it. So now if you run the program again, you will see that we have our tux. And if you now press right, you will see that we'll move right and we'll have a movement animation. And if you press left, then it will move left. And if we release the left key, the idle animation will still face left. How cool is that? I thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.